Volcanoes. Written by Chuck Garofano. The eruption of Vesuvius. Few people in the Roman city of Pompeii was alarmed by the earthquakes that began shaking the region in AD 79. They had endured se- seismic activities in the past and had rebuilt their city whenever any in the any significant damage occurred. Usually, through though the earthquakes were minor and you. And people has grown accustomed to them. The residents of Pompeii loved their beautiful city and would not live leave just because the the ground occasionally shook or a building fell down. No one connected the trembling ground with the plume of smoke that steadily hissed hissed from nearby Mount Vesuvius. After all, people had lived in Pompeii for centuries without ever witnessing a volcanic eruption. Without, and the slopes of Mount Vesuvius were teeming with life and were covered with trees, flowers, and grasses. It had been thousands of years since the volcano had erupted, so most people people assumed that it was dormant or even extinct. But everything changed on August 24, around one o'clock in the afternoon. Suddenly, a tremendous explosion shook the area around the mountain, sending molten rock, ash, and dust spewing from the summit of the volcano and darkening the sky. This dust, ash, and stone, collectively known as tephra, rained down on the city, covering the ground as far away. Was sixteen kilometers, ten miles from the mountain. By three o'clock, lava gushed from the mouth of the volcano at an alarming rate, destroying everything in its path. By six o'clock, the cloud of dust had, and ash had ascended to thirty-two kilometers, twenty mile in height, and the swirling energy inside it generates lightning bolts. Bolts. The ash continued to blanket the area, covering the ground to the depth of one meter, three point three feet, and causing buildings to collapse under the weight of the falling debris. Many people in the city surrounding Mount Vesuvius tried to evacuate the area as the volcano dem- demolished their homes and farms. They gathered their valuables and most po- portable treasures and hurried their families away from the disaster. Some people tried to traverse the thick layers of ash that covered the ground, but the ash was so deep and so hot that many people died. Others were struck and killed by stones falling from the dark sky and choked and suffocated on the ash and dust-clogged air. Around midnight, the crisis grew even worse. The massive cloud of ash, poisonous gases, glowing hot dust, and smoke has become so dense and heavy that it can no longer remain airborne. Airborne, the cloud collapsed into a pyro pyroclastic flow, racing down the mountains at a speed of up to 500 kilometers per hour, 310 miles per hour. This was Mount Vesuvius's first surge cloud, with which, within a few moments, scorched, scorched and buried the people in the cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum. And it, as it swept over the, them like a wave, as more dust and ash billowed from the volcano, more surge clouds followed. When the eruption was over, two cities of the Roman Empire was completely buried and wiped off the face of the earth. They would not be di- rediscovered for over a thousand years. Did you know, Pompeii, a city from the far from Mount Vesuvius, was completely buried by the surge cloud. As the bodies of victims decayed over time, they left pockets of air in the hardened ash and mud that surrounded them. These air pockets preserved the exact shapes of the bodies. They once contained archaeologists filled the holes with plasters to make cast, showing how the people looked when they died. This was Mount. Sub- Sorry, what you just read is an account of a real event. And but how did it happen? And what could cause such a catastrophic? And what could cause such a 
cast. Catastrophic explosion and the volcanoes are so dangerous. Why do people choose to live near them? People and volcanoes. People live near volcanoes for a variety of reasons. They often find nutrient-rich soil for farming in these regions, or wonderful hot, wonderful hot springs. Hot springs where they can take relaxing baths. Still, people have learned over time to respect volcanoes. Long ago, people had no way to predict or understand volcanoes. They told stories to explain the dangerous and sporadic,、uh, sporadic eruptions. For instance, people in Hawaii believe that the goddess Pele caused volcanoes to erupt when she was angry. Some types of volcanic glass, such as Pele's hair and Pele's tears, are named in the honor of this god. Native Americans told stories to explain the origin of an extinct volcano in Wyoming, Wyoming, known as the Devil Tower. They told how this towering col- column of rock, so striking in appearance, was created by magic, and how it's deeply gouged. Sides were shaped by the claws of an angry bear. In ancient Rome, people believed that the Roman gods Vulcan worked in his blacksmith's forge beneath Earth's Earth's surface. They saw volcanoes as the chimneys of the underground forge, where Vulcan fashioned lightning bolts for used by Jupiter, the king of the gods, and made weapons and armors. Arma for Mars, the god of war. The word volcano comes from the name Vulcan. Even today, vo- volcanologists say that volcanoes smell like a blacksmith's forge. In Japan, people still climb Mount Fuji, a volcano that last erupted in 1707, as a form of spiritual practice in both the Shinto and Buddhist traditions. Today, scientists use a variety of tools and and instruments to help them gather information about volcanoes. They understood that forces that create mountains、uh, and have equipment that can help them predict when a volcano will next erupt, where and why volcanoes form. The first volcanoes appeared about 3.5 billion years ago, covering vast areas with hot lava that spewed from deep within Earths. Earth's hard surface to crust is made of many continent, continent-sized, make up the continents themselves, while others make up the ocean floors. Just under the surface of the plates, the Earth is extremely hot, about 1,200 Celsius or 2,992 degrees Fahrenheit, so hot that rock melts into a liquid called magma. Magma. Sometimes the magma forces its way up to the surface and seeps out through cracks in the crust, causing the volcanoes to form. Scientists estimate that more than 1,500 different volcanoes have erupted in the last 10,000 years, and every year about 30 to Five or forty volcanoes erupt at various places around the world. Sometimes the only sign of volcanic activity is the amount of amount of smoke or steam and emerging from an erupting volcano. Some volcanoes are er- always erupting slowly, while others, like Vesuvius, can remain quiet for hundreds or even thousands of years between explosive. Eruptions. Volcanoes usually form at the edge of techno- tectonic plates, which are slowly floating on the thick liquid magma underneath them. But the various plates are moving in different directions, and as they move, they can crash into, pull away from, or grind past past other plates. As the huge plates slide and rub against each other, their movements create large cracks in the crust, where magma can break through to form volcanoes. The, there are at least 500 active volcanoes in the world, most of which, of which are located near the edges of tectonic plates. The edge of the Pacific pl- Ocean plate is a particularly dense volcanic. 
region known as the Ring of Fire. Another notably active volcano region runs along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, which is a mountain chain in the Atlantic. The two plates are drifting apart in the At- Atlantic Ocean, allowing magma to seep through the ocean floor, where it accumulates. Accumulates. Over time, the magma can build up and create mountains so tall that they can emerge from the water. The country of Iceland sits atop the summits of large volcanoes in the Mid-Atlantic Atlantic Ridge. Other volcanoes are lo- located in areas far away from the ridge, the edges of the plates. For example, the islands of Hawaii are in the center of the Pacific pla- Ocean Plate. They're located above a hot spot, a place where a hot magma sits very close to the surface of Earth's crust. Sometimes magma creates a new island, but the process is gradual, taking tens or even hundreds of ye- thousands of years. In Yellowstone National Park, in the middle waterways, in the middle of the North American Plate, an underground hot spot sits directly beneath the underground lakes and waterways. This magma heats up the ground and the water in this area like a giant teapot, creating geysers and hot springs. You can visit Yellowstone in Wyoming and see what erupting from the ground at geysers such as Old Faithful. Different volcanoes erupt in different ways, depending on where and why the volcano forms. Some volcanoes erupt gently and gradually, while others suddenly explode with the force of many atomic bombs. Let's um, examine different kinds of volcanoes and learn how they erupt. Composite volcanoes. Mount Vesuvius, which you read about earlier, is a composite of volcano on the on the west coast of southern Italy, com- composed volcanoes are explosive volcanoes. Their eruptions can be extremely vi- violent and destructive, also called stratovolcan- stratovolcanoes. They're the most common type of volcano. They're usually very large mountains with steep sides and eventually evenly shaped peaks, often with a bowl-shaped crater at the top. The crater is a hollow area where the magma, hot gases, and ash comes out. Do you know when the Mount St. Helens in Washington State, state erupted on May 18, 1980, 63 people died and 311, 311 11 square kilometers? 311 square kilometers, 900, 193 square miles of fa- forest were flattened by hot winds that blew down the mountainsides. Most composite volcanoes occur where the magma near the surface is vicious, thick and slow moving like syrup. Magma moves towards the surface in surface in tubes called vents. When the magma is unusually thick, it can cool and harden inside the vent, plugging the vent and trapping the magma below. Because the heat and gases beneath the plugged vent have nowhere to go, the pressure slowly begins to increase, and eventually the pressure becomes so great that it reaches a critical threshold, and the volcano explodes. Sometimes the explosion is so violent that the the whole mountain is destroyed in the blast. When Washington State's Mount St. Helens erupted in 1980, the entire northern side of the mountain was was obliterated. When composite volcanoes erupt, they send massive clouds of ash, dust, smoke, hot gas, and rock into the air. These clouds rise for many kilometers, turning the, turning the sky black and raining ash onto the ground. When a cloud of debris becomes too dense to remain in the air, it collapses into in a violent surge cloud. Many composite volcanoes are very tall, and they are often caped with ice and snow. In an instant, an explosion can melt all of the ice and snow on the top of the volcano, sending the food, water, mud, and rock racing down the mountains at up to 100 kilometers per hour, 62 miles per hour. 
such a mudslide triggered by volcano activity is known as a light. Lahar. Do you know the Klamath Indians in southern Oregon used a story to to store, tell a story about the Oregon of Crater Lake? In the story, the first coyote fell in love with a star and found a way to join her in the sky. When he fell back to earth, his impact made a hole that became Crater Lake. Some volcanic ash sounds. Clouds are so gigantic that the ash and dust can travel around the world, blocking out sunlight and cooling down the entire planet. After the 1815 eruption of Tambora, a volcano in Indonesia, people living as far away as North America experienced a cold, snowy summer. What? Sometimes, an entire underground lake of magma can pour out of a composite volcano, leaving a huge empty space below with nothing to support it. The surface collapses into the empty chamber, leaving a large bowl-shaped basin called a caldera. Calderas can measure as much as 100 kilometers, 60 miles from side to side. Over time, they often fill with water, creating large lakes such as Crater Lake in Oregon. Composite volcanoes can destroy huge forests, bury entire cities, and kill thousands of people. These volcanoes are very dangerous because they often remain quiet for hundreds of years between eruptions. People forgot that the volcano might erupt and they build their homes dangerously close to the mountain. Shield volcanoes. You may have seen a video of bright orange lava flowing or spraying from the top of a volcano. The lava, which is very runny, flows smoothly and quickly, moving like water in a stream. The lava spreads out the land, over the land before slowly hardening, hardening and building up. This type of lava comes from a shield volcano. Shield volcanoes usually have a gentle, smooth mountain slopes in the shapes of shields. Eruptions of seal shield volcanoes are usually gentle than, rather than explosive, although the lam- lava can flow- flows can still destroy roads, homes, and forests. Sometimes a shield volcano contains hot gases at steam that sprays from the center, creating a bright lava fountain, which the paths of the lava flows are stable and predictable. Scientists are often able to get a very close to get very close to study them. Shield volcanoes can remain quietly active for long periods of time and grow to become extremely large in the process. Mauna Loa on Hawaii is the tallest volcano in the world, rising 9,170 meters, 30,080 feet from its base on the sea floor, making it taller, taller than Mount Everest. If Mauna Loa erupts again, it could grow even taller. However, even Mauna Loa seems tiny, when compared to the largest known volcano in our solar system, Olympus, Olympus Mounds on Mars. This enormous Martianian, Martianian, Martian shield volcano stands 27 kilometers, 17 miles tall. Cinder cones and lava domes. Some volcanoes are not active long enough to form large mountains. Instead, they may just spray small bits of lava into the air for brief periods of time. The small lava chunks and bits are harsh or ash hardened into the lightweight black, black rocks called cinders. The cinders pile up around the vent into a cone-shaped hill with a crater at the top. Such, as, such hills are called cinder cones. Brand new volcanoes that suddenly appear often form cinder cones. Other cinder cones cones pile up inside the craters or calderas of larger, older volcanoes. Most cinder cones erupt one, only once. Because cinder cones are made up of loose rocks, they usually erode quickly in the rain, wind and rain. Lava domes also result from small, brief eruption, but the lava that forms these structures is just thick, pasty liquid that oozes from the vent and quickly hardens. Sometimes more lava pushes and expands through the center of the dome, cracking the outside. These domes often form in areas with other volcanic activity. They are often found at the craters and calderas of large volcanoes, like composite volcanoes. 
Lava domes often explode violently. Conclusion. Volcanoes are the most spectacular evidence we have that Earth is a changing planet. Changing planet. Lava pouring from a volcanic vent creates new rock and new land, and volcanic ash makes extremely fertile soil that is usually useful for farming. In some places, people use the geothermal energy from volcanoes to run power plants and produce electricity. Some people even live inside volcanoes. In Rabaul, in the country of Papua New Guinea, Vol- New Guinea, volcanoes sometimes erupt inside the town volcanic mountains, including Mount Fuji in Japan, Mount Rainier in Washington, and Mauna Loa in Hawaii. Are some of the most re- recognizable and beautiful mountains in the world. It is no wonder that humans often choose to live near volcanoes. But we should always remember that volcanoes can be violent, dangerous places. Volcanoes unleash some of Earth's most powerful forces.